Welcome to Cairo Author Insights. I am incredibly excited to have with us Dr. Meg Hayworth today, PhD, transpersonal, transpersonal psychologist with over 20 years clinical experience. Before we go into the incredible journey she's had with her book, uh, books, in fact, I want to give you a little bit more background because, and I know you probably weren't prepared for this, Dr. Meg, but I want people to know the incredible person that we have here in this uh, presentation today so they can have an understanding of the incredible service you've done to society and the community. Not only are you a private celebrity chef, you know, featured in projects such as Eat, Drink and Die, and a best-selling author, you're a superstar presenter, having been seen in the Los Angeles Times, um, Hay House Radio, NBC, Nightly News, The Huffington Post. You have a nutritional strategist background, which allows you to bust myths around people's health and well-being, creating both the mind and the body and the physiology changes. And I think if I was to bring a statement that I, I believe would help people understand what describes you is your last statement, let me show you what's possible, really for me identifies the opportunity that people have when working with you to experience the forms of life and transform to their potential. The author of the amazing and best-selling Get Well Now, Healing Yourself with Food and the Power of the Mind, and also Done With Dairy, Giving Up Gluten, Dr. Meek Hayworth, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to have this conversation with you. Oh, great. I know that you've done so much, and I'm so super excited about this for a number of reasons. One, I know, I know my audience wants to understand more about writing a book. They also want to understand how they can grow and develop their platform and express their expertise. But to get to there, they need to know a little bit about the journey of how they can reach that, you know, that potential. And you really epitomize that for me because of the journey you've had and the impact that you were having. So I'd love to just begin by hearing your story, uh, understanding a little bit about your journey. So tell us about you. Oh boy, where to start? <laughs> so, um, you know, I think in terms of the story of, of how I got to be who I am and how I got to, to become the author that I am and, and all of that, it really, it was my own healing journey. You know, it was, learning through illness, which was my big wake up call in my twenties. I was in a, in and out of doctor's offices. And I know a lot of people have this story. Um, and you know, this was quite, this was a few years ago, let's put it that way. So, <laughs> um, but I went through a lot of pain and suffering and difficulty before I got to understand that holistic healing and looking at the body as an entire system, mind, body, soul, everything, energetic, the whole, the whole package is the way to, to really get a full healing from illness, from, um, I also uh, went through abuse, uh, sexual abuse as a child and physical abuse and um, emotional abuse. And I went through a lot of different things. I, was, I drowned as a child. I was struck by lightning when I was uh, about six years ago. And so just one challenge after the next. I've been through divorce. I lost the only baby I was pregnant with. I mean, it's just been like one thing after the next, but I have a very particular, I've noticed that every single time there were certain things that I applied to this, um, to these situations. And, uh, and each time another thing arises, you know, the lightning being a huge one that happened six years ago, I apply the same things, the same principles, the same uh, steps, basically, to it. And um, you know, I think we all have these wake-up call experiences that are um, that are important. And that's really what happened for me. It was multiple wake-up calls, and um, and then and, and that's really what led me to discover, you know, what does it take to really heal? You know, what are the different levels and layers, and and how? Uh, how do we do that? And, you know, first thing really is finding practitioners, you know, that can really help you, help you heal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a compelling story. I know that when you face adversity, there are challenges. And when you rise to those challenges and overcome those obstacles, you become a better person, a stronger person. You identify how to heal because the journey either causes you to go inwards and, and, and find a solution or you become a victim to that process and you never allow 
um, that that victimhood to, to claim you or, or to claim an identity of being a victim and it allowed you the power to become the person you are and to express all of the, the knowledge and the wisdom that you have and to, and to serve other people because of the journey you had been through. And I, I just think it's such a beautiful story and a powerful story and it encompasses everything that you're doing now. So um, what, what led to that breakthrough? So obviously the experience, but how, how did the breakthrough drive you to those next steps? Um, the breakthrough moment that I had really was, um, I was in my late twenties and I was reading an article on alternative medicine in the Washingtonian magazine from DC originally and now in LA. And I'm reading this magazine, I can barely hold it up. I'm in so much pain. And uh, they're talking about chiropractic care. And I thought, oh, well, that would be great for so-and-so. And then it clicked with me that I was so busy thinking about other people and what their needs might be that I really wasn't thinking about myself. And also that I didn't, I knew there were alternatives, but I, you know, was told that my mom's a scientist. <laughs> so I was told that, you know, that anything outside of Western medicine is, is really, you know, crackpot medicine. And, you know, so I really stayed away from it until that moment where it really clicked with me and somebody had been raving about their chiropractor to me and I called her and asked for her number and that's that moment. And I think this is really important when you have a choice point like this and you make a decision, if you just decide I'm gonna do this thing. And it was, it seemed small at the time to get this chiropractor's phone number, but going to her is what opened up all all the things I started to do from meditation and yoga and uh, nutrition was a huge piece of, of healing for me because I had all these food allergies and had no idea. And this was before, you know, 25 years ago before food allergies were really a thing. Um, yeah. And now you're on this healing journey. You've already got the, the knowledge and the skills in the, in the area of the mind and you're adding to that nutritional strategies, your meditative techniques. And so you're deepening your, your, your understanding of the healing process. And this starts to change your life and in changing your life, it leads you further into another direction. And we start to shape this understanding into a form where we, where we can effectively share it. And that started to, am I correct, lead to this process of the Get Well Now book and, and the program and protocols that you use to be able to transform people's lives. Would that be a, a reasonable way of, you know, the journey leading to that, understanding that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So tell yeah. me, how have you, you, you've, you've gone on this journey, you've learned this information, you're applying it in your own life, you're now going to be working and developing a, a broader scope of work with people. How did that get into a book form? What, how did Get Well Now start to shape itself? Um, well, Get Well Now was really my sixth book. So, um, but it, uh, I did it differently than I had done my other books. I have self-published all of my books and there was always a reason for that. I, um, and I think it's important to do this is to find a book mentor, somebody who really knows the industry, who can help you understand how to navigate it and what's best for you and your business and what you want to put out there. Um, because doing the, the big going the big publishers route um, may not be right for you. And that's really what I found early on is it wasn't really the best course of action for me. Now, Get Well Now, um, I actually have a copy of it sitting right here. Um, I, uh, uh, that one I released uh, 2017, 2018, in October 2018. Um, so it's been pretty recent. And um, this one I uh, hired a, a number of different people to help me with this book, um, you know, from uh, someone to help me edit it, someone to help me, uh, they did the cover for me, um, you know, so outsourcing those things I think are really important as, as part of what you do in, in, in your publishing journey. Um, I have a degree in writing. Um, um, my undergraduate degree is in English with a concentration in writing, and so Writing has always been something that was on my radar and something that I wanted to do. In fact, when I graduated college, I thought I was going to be a travel writer. So um, that's really where I was focusing my attention, but everything in life took me away from it and into to the healing arts. And um, so 
having that background is important. And I, and I would recommend to people that if you don't have any kind of writing experience to take a writing class, um, even if you take a, a workshop, uh, there's a great editor in New York that I use. Her name is Stephanie Gunning. Um, highly recommend her. Um, and she had done writer's workshops where everybody gets together. At that time, it was all on the phone, you know? Um, and then we talk about our projects. She helps us with laying out the, um, the outline for it because the structure and outline for your book is really important, but also the timeliness of the book, what is the book about, why this book and why now are the two big questions that the publishers are always looking for. Yeah, perfect. And tell us a little bit of your, the, the why of this book. So I, I, you have many books and we spoke about um, Done With Dairy, um, Giving Up Gluten. I know that, again, that was a self-publishing you did that on Lulu, if my memory serves me correctly. And so there's all of these other, uh, the, the other works, but let's, let's just jump into Get Well Now and the story, not just the story of how you got to that book, but what is the message within that book for people so that they can understand you know, th what you bring in terms of the wisdom, the knowledge, the insight to your interactions with people. Yeah, Get Well Now is, is healing yourself with food and the power of the mind. So it's really about holistic medicine and how to look at yourself as a holistic being, that it's not just a physical experience that you're going through when you have an illness. It's a, it's a holistic experience. And so I go step by step through everything from diet to mindset. And it's not really just mindset. Um, you know, what you think, how you view your life, your perception of your life are all very important contributing factors to whether you stay sick or get well. Um, I talk a lot about emotions and I created a, um, a technique called whole person integration technique. It is also in this book that um, the, the, the technique that people can do on themselves. And um, it helps them to release the emotions and how the body holds emotional experience from traumatic experiences. So for instance, you know, you're, it, say it's, um, you have a lot of anger, you feel like you cycle in anger all the time and you're holding it in your stomach. I also talk about the human energy system and the attributes of, of the energy system and how that relates to the anger in your stomach, but also how that can relate to the illness, like maybe you have ulcers. And so you start to look at how emotions make us sick, but then I help you understand emotions also make you well. So the structure of the book really is about, let's look at your diet, support your body to heal itself while you're doing the emotional release work. And here's basically how to, it's, a, it's only 150 pages. And it's a, actually, everyone said, oh my gosh, it's such a fast read, you know, like I just couldn't put it down. Um, but then it's also a reference. So you keep going back and looking at, you know, oh, okay, so this is how I do the diet. So it's not just information. It, it, there's a lot of how to and tips in there as well. It's a, it's a great in the book and, and it's so useful to be able to, to, to guide the, the reader through their own healing journey. How has having a book influenced your interaction with your community, with your, your patients as they come into your practice? How does, how does the book engage in that way? Um, the book is very helpful because you, you um, can just have them reference it look at it and then they'll, they'll see, they'll really get to understand my process. When I work with them, what is it going to be like? What's my voice? How does that affect them? Um, uh, do they, do they uh, feel connected to me? You know, it does help a lot with connection um, because you get, there's so much of your heart and soul that goes into the book that you write, you know? And so, um, people really feel that it comes across when they read the book. So it, it helps tremendously to, it, to get them also to the next level. So I know a lot of us will have different levels of, of how we present our work, you know, and the book is often the one that makes people go, okay, I really need to work directly with her one-on-one. -on -one. You know? that's, that's, that's an incredible insight because a lot of times people find us because of our books. We, we have a book out there 
in the public domain, people come across it, they read it, and they go, well, this is a great book. And so there's the first part, it becomes an opportunity for people to learn about you and find out about you. But what you just highlighted there is the second element of them reading it is they get to know you through those pages, and therefore a connection is already made, and the relationship is established. But then what you said that really I think is an incredible takeaway is it allows you to go with them to the next level because they have that foundational building block from the material in the book, the connection within the relationship and the trust that has been established, that then allows you to leverage all of that into a greater depth of connection and therefore an ability to produce a more profound and powerful impact. I think that, that was what I took away in terms of that, the conversation you just shared there. It really gives a great insight into the power of the book and the importance of the work that you do with the person from that foundation. So how is it you use the book to, to go further in that relationship? How, you've got content in there, but you've obviously got a broader scope of knowledge that not everything you know is in the book and you take them on a journey beyond the book within the consultation to a place of transformation. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, there's also other programs too that might be really important for that person. So say they really need the food part more. There's other programs that I can lead them to so they, they focus more on getting that part of their world in order. Um, and, then, and then there's you know, the, the working with the inner work where they may focus more deeply on um, uh, you know, working with me or uh, working on themselves through the process. So um, it gives them uh, different opportunities and, and different uh, ways of deepening whatever it is that they need as well. And that's one of the beauties of holistic medicine in general, you know, is it really makes a person think about, uh, about all of the different aspects of themselves and what aspect is really in the forefront and is, is calling right now for help. Um, yeah. It's beautiful. So well, one thing I always say in practice um, and with my team as well, we meet them where they're at, we lead them where they need to go. And so you're, you're your book, they, they pick up the book, they know that they want to, you know, they, they know they want to get well now. So the title of the book is compelling to start with. They know that they that the healing that needs to take place will come back, come through to them, to through to them by the mind, via the foods that they eat. And then they meet you. So they meet you where they're at, which is the challenges they have, the problems, but you can then through programs that you have to develop material, go deeper with them, leading them on a on a deeper journey. So the book became a calling card. Uh, an opportunity for you to meet people, but then to explore a more deeper connection that the book allows to open up through the connection that results. I just think that's that's a really important understanding for people to have. So again, I love that you just nuggets of information um, that surface really key key points. With the book, I just want to ask um, something on, on a personal level. What was what was the meaning of the book for you? Not so much what did it do for your business, which is obviously it helps grow the business. So it gives you that authority, credibility, connection. What did it mean for you personally as a writer? What was your inward journey and your experience? Not just this book, but all of your books. And, and how, how do you go deep, deep in to experience the writing process? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. I'm so glad you asked that because um, personally for me, it was a culmination of 20, 25 years of work. Um, that I had done on myself and done with my clients. So it was uh, very deeply meaningful, deeply personal. There's a lot of details about my own story in here. So there's this vulnerability that as a writer and as a, as a healer, you have to really access that, that vulnerability inside of you to bring that out and share that because that, that also talk about something that really connects you with another person. Um, some people say, you know, you should never share your personal story with a client. And I'm, I'm the opposite. People hire me because I've been there and they feel more connected to me because I've been there and I'm not ashamed to come out and say it. So, um, so that makes, you know, and everybody has a different way of looking at it, but just as the journey of as, as being a writer, of being a writer for a book like this, it's deeply personal. Um, it, the, Getting it done was very interesting. I mean, there were times where it wasn't, I, I don't usually have writer's block, although I, on occasion I do, and it's not that. My process is more that I let things sort of 
Like I'll have the outline, I'll get that down first. And so I'll know that's sort of the map and I know where I'm gonna go next with this map. But then uh, the, the details from the map may not come right away. So I kind of know to sit for a bit, you know, maybe go do something else, go for a walk. That's something that really helps me a lot. Go, go to the beach, you know, just commune with the ocean, go out with friends, go do something that sort of takes your mind off of it. Because I have this sense that the book is, is in there turning. The, the words are coming in somehow. They're coming together somehow. And after I feel refreshed from doing something else, I'll come back and sit down and I'll be able to write that next section. So um, it, it, that for me is, is the sort of the, the basis of my process. It's a process and I really appreciate sharing that vulnerability, um, the, the, the vulnerability part of the writing and the story and the connection that happens from that. And again, that, that leads to the impact that it has on the reader. So what type of feedback do you get from readers? What type of message do they share with you because of that really personal experience of vulnerability you share, that you share? How are readers responding to that? What are they taught, telling you and what, what are their stories when they come in as a result of that connection? Uh, it brings out their own stories. And, and when you get personal with somebody, it allows them to get personal with you. And it's, it's a very powerful exchange when a person feels like they can really share their deepest, darkest thing with you and, and I always see that as a huge privilege um, that, that they're coming to me and they're sharing these things with me. They're, they're letting me hold their hand through their darkness. Um, and that to me is just, I, I, I'm, I feel very lucky that I get to be able to do that. Yeah, that's people, people will ask me, you know, how can you sit and listen to people's problems all day? And I don't see my work as that at all. Um, I see it as I get to help them do something that I've done before and something that I've watched hundreds of other people do before as well and contribute to their lives and watch them heal. It's like, what could be better? <laughs> so, you know, you're, you know, you're in your calling when, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And I, and I think the ability to have the level of impact that you have comes from, the, again, that connection You've, you've opened up, you've become vulnerable. They feel like they can share their story with you. They can, they can come in with all of their pain and, and their darkness. And in that moment of opening and connection, you can actually go deeper with them because of that. You don't have to have this superficial relationship that is transient because certainly I know within my own practice, the, the deeper the connection, the more real the relationship, the greater longevity of the care and therefore the greater impact and transformation that's possible. So if you don't have that vulnerability, if you don't have that connection, the superficial relationship doesn't last any longer than in an interpersonal relationship that is superficial doesn't last. So the depth comes from the authenticity in the expression and therefore the impact, the results from that is a natural byproduct. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful journey. Writing a book opens an entire world not only of self-discovery, but connection and therefore transformation. So I, I'm, I'm loving listening to you because it's just like lights are going off in my head and hearing, yes, this is exactly what practice should be like and how the book can be a mirror for that and a mirror for our own lives and a mirror for the practice journey. So before, you know, I, I think it's just been so great. Is there anything like that you would like to share that is important to you to talk about in terms of being in practice, serving your community, being an author, having, you know, being a celebrity chef and being on, featured on so many things. What, what does that platform, how did that come about as a byproduct of your vision of your life and, and, your, and your journey? So talk about how you've got to where you are now through that process. Wow, <laughs> that's a big question. Um, you know, for me, so many things have just emerged in my life and I don't know how else to put this. Um, I, I feel like what's happened in my life is when I made the decision, I made the decision to, to be a healer, literally 20 some years ago. And I remember even sitting my parents down and telling them, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next rest of my life, you know? And from that decision, and, and I think 
decisions are key. When you make a full decision with every part of yourself and everything you do after that, every choice you make after that towards it is another thing that opens it up to greater, just to be bigger and bigger and more and more powerful. It just, it gives it more power. And so as a result, I've had so many opportunities just come to me over the years. When I look back at being on eatdrinkordie.com, which was a spinoff of Will Ferrell's Funny or Die, and I was a featured chef on there, it just fell into my lap. And a lot of things in my life have, have come to me this way. I'm not the person who will push, 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 push up against everything to get what I think it is I want. I'm the person who will allow life to organically unfold in front of me and will just, and things come to me. And I just, it's very much an intuitive journey that I've taken. Um, and that's one of my strongest assets is my intuitive abilities. It's one of the things that I intentionally went out and honed my intuitive abilities. I've taken multiple classes on it. I think it's, it's, it's a skill, something I had a basic talent for, but it's a skill too. And so developing that skill has also been a, a big part of it. So I think, you know, everybody has a different way of doing things and people are super structured. I'm not a super structured person. I have sort of a loose structure, but I do have a structure. And then I just let my life unfold from that structure. I do go after things, of course. I do, you know, go after, uh, you know, if, if I want to talk to somebody on my podcast, for instance, because I just want to have this amazing conversation, um, they'll always say yes, you know, and I've talked to some, some just incredible people. Um, so at any rate, that's just sort of kind of a nutshell of how things unfold for me. Oh, that's a, I love that story because, again, a lot of people say, I want to be successful and I have to create it. On the other hand, what I'm hearing from you is you, you became vulnerable, you shared your story, you made a decision. And I love that idea of making a decision and following through with the commitment to that decision. Because in a way, we, when we become healed, as I said, we become the practitioner, we make the choice. There is the first choice. To me, there's almost an element of obligation that goes with that choice is that we're here to serve, we need to make an impact. So we have to put ourselves in uncomfortable positions of reaching out to people or having conversations that maybe um, we want to have but feel uncomfortable doing it. So having the, the will to take that step forward, as you said, sometimes you chase things, but it's because that's natural inherent within us to be able to serve. And the humility with which you speak, given the incredible you know, success that you've had and the impact that you have, that humility comes from the fact that you love to serve and, and you've made that choice and you're honoring that choice. And as a byproduct of that, the universe is saying to you, here, are the, here, here is the rewards for your gift of, of pursuing your, your vision for your life. And uh, to me, it sounds like it's a natural byproduct because of, of who you are and how you turn up um, and your willingness to, to boldly step into those uncomfortable conversations of reaching out to someone saying, can you speak? Will you do this? Or will I write? Um, will I put my vulnerability into the book? And it's a beautiful process. It's a really amazing uh, description of how success naturally unfolds for the for the giver who also steps boldly into their power and, and is courageous in the face of challenge adversity which you have faced and overcome and now being able to share it so i love that story it's uh, it's beautiful yeah as we come to the to just the end of this presentation um just like one final question um for you to reflect on i know there are so many people that i work with that would love to to write their book to be able to you know, share their message, tell their story, and they don't necessarily feel that they have the confidence to do that, that, you know, maybe Meg's a super genius. She, she just said she could write from a young age and, and then study that area. It's easy for her to write. It's easy for her to speak. She's, you know, she's got a PhD. She's highly intelligent. There's all of these reasons why you can do it, but they can't. What is your message to them particularly given your, your background, you understand the mind so well, what would your message be to them to overcome that inner critic, that uncertainty and doubt so that they too can claim their power? You no, know, a, a book is, it's a powerful representation of you and who you are and what you're here to do, how you are here to serve. It is 
it's such an important part of the journey, I think, as if you're if you are in your own business of being healer and helping other people heal, it's one way that you can put all of your process together to help others. It's one of the best ways to do that because here's this 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 tangible item that you're gonna have, this person's gonna have in their house and people will pull it off the shelf for years to come. And uh, for you to not get your message down on paper, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you're doing a disservice to people. So do a service to them by getting your heart, your soul, your knowledge, your wisdom, your experience into, into book form so that you can help as many people as you possibly can. Because these can go all over the world. They're digital too. So, you know, it's, it's never been about how many copies do I sell? How much money do I make? It's, it's never been about that for me. It's always been about how many people can I serve? And how will this, this work really help other people heal? So, and I think focusing on that is it will be the most important thing you can do as a as a writer and as a as a healer. That's a beautiful life statement, Dr. Meg Hayworth. You have been an incredible servant in terms of both your writing, your 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 clinical practice, and the work that you've had, have done throughout the world. I'm grateful to have had time with you and know that um, you've you've impacted so many lives, and this this will continue to expand your message. Thank you. Your details will be available underneath this video so that people can connect with you, access your book, the link to your book will be there. Um, grab this book, it's a great insight and make sure that you, you, know, you follow Dr. Meg because she has some incredible insights for everyone to share, to learn and to grow from. Thank you, Dr. Meg, I appreciate you, appreciate your message and I'm really grateful for this time. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for having me.